Hello friends and welcome to Pi Shine Learning Series. Today, we will talk about socket programming. We will run Python codes for server and client. By using OpenCV we will extract video of the server's webcam and then send it to the client. The server and client modules can either run on the same computer or two separate computers that are connected to the Wi-Fi. Welcome to Python Learning Series. Please share, subscribe and press the bell icon. Let's have a quick introduction to network sockets. A network socket is a software structure within a network node that serves as an endpoint for sending and receiving data across the network. The structure and properties of a socket are defined by the network API. Sockets are created only during the lifetime of a process of an application running in the node. A socket is externally identified to other hosts by its address, which is the triad of transport protocol, IP address, and port number. The remote process establishes a network socket in its own instance of the protocol stack. It uses the networking API to connect to the application, presenting its own socket address for use by the application. In the standard internet protocols, a socket address is the combination of an IP address and a port number, much like a telephone address, which is the combination of a phone number and a particular extension. There are several types of internet sockets, such as connectionless, based on user datagram protocol or UDP. In UDP, each packet is sent and received individually, without a specific sequence. Therefore, the order and reliability are not guaranteed. On the other hand, in connection-oriented sockets such as in transmission control protocol or TCP, the packets are sent in a sequence or stream. Therefore, we call them stream sockets. The order and reliability is also guaranteed. The third are core draw sockets. They allow direct transmission and reception of the IP packets. They don't require any protocol-specific formatting of the transport layer. An optional header is added to the packets at the time of transmission. Raw sockets are mostly used in security-related applications. In this tutorial, we will use the stream sockets. Now, let's come to the client-server communication model. The server initially creates a socket. It then goes to the listening mode. At the beginning, it does not require IP address of the client. However, the client must know the IP address and the port number of the server to start communication. Let's have a look at the steps at the server side. In Python program, we will use these functions as shown. It starts from creation of socket by specifying the address family and socket type to socket.socket .socket function. Next we will bind the server socket to a host IP address and a port. We use bind function. The port should be an integer from 1 to 65,535. Next, we will use listen function with a specific value of backlog. It enables a server to accept connections. Here we use a backlog of 5, which means that there are, at the most, 5 unaccepted connections that the system will allow before refusing new connections. By accepting the connection using the accept function, we will obtain the client socket and the address. After that, we can handle the client socket to receive or send message. Finally, we close the socket. Now, let's have a look at the client side. Unlike the server side, here we will use a connect function after creating the client socket. The host IP address and the port will be same as that of the server. Similarly, we can receive or send the information in the next step. The 1024 is buffer size. TCP is a streaming protocol, meaning there are no message boundaries. It is just a stream of bytes. It can be taken as a FIFO. If server sends 1024 bytes, then there will be 1024 total bytes to receive on the client. A receive 60 will receive from 1 to 60 bytes in the order sent. The byte buffer size must be from 1024 to 64 kilo. The communication can be ended with a socket close function. 
So, we will use OpenCV to get the frames of the webcam, at the server side, each frame data will be pickled and packed, we will display the frame as well, at the client side, we unpack the received packet data, and then load the pickled frame, finally, we will display the received video frame. So, how to find the host IP address? We can find it by using the IP config command in PowerShell. Simply, press Shift key and click on Open PowerShell here. As you can see, in the middle image, the IPv4 address is the host IP. In the right figure, if you have a Wi-Fi computer, then use that IP address. Alright, so let's start the coding. Let's import the four essentials. The CV2 is OpenCV, which can be installed easily. The link is provided in the description below. The struct, pickle, and socket are built in Python modules. The pickle module implements binary protocols for serializing and deserializing a Python object structure. We will do the steps, as indicated before.
That's it. Let's run it to check the IP address. Next, we will do the client side coding. Again, we will need these four essentials. Create the client socket and put the IP address and port number, which we just found by running the server pi file. We initialize the data variable as a string. The payload size is defined with letter Q, which means an unsigned, long, long integer that will take 8 bytes. Then we will receive the packets and append them to the data. We will use a 4 kilo of byte buffer. The first 8 bytes contain the size of the packed message, so, at line 16, we have used the data from 0 to payload size, which is 8 in this case. The rest of the data contains our video frame, so, we replace data from the payload size onward as the new data, which will only have the frame to display. We will get the packed message size and run a while loop until we receive all the data from the client socket for a frame. Finally, the frame data is recovered. Let's display the output. Let's use a short key to quit the running video frames. We will use letter Q to quit. Finally, we close the socket connection.
Let's first test on the same computer, and next, we will test them on two computers. So, open up both Pi files in two separate PowerShell windows. Run the server.py file first and then run the client.py file. The webcam is external, which is pointing towards a paused movie. As you can see the transmitted and received videos are in complete synchronization. Let's play the paused movie to see some actions. Let's press Q to exit the running codes. It will be more interesting to see the server and client running on separate computers. So, we copied the server code to another computer, which has Windows 7. To demonstrate the cross-platform support, we will receive the video on a Mac OS computer. This application can be easily extended to multiple clients where each client will send its video to the main server. On the server side we can make a graphical user interface to show a video of each cameras. If you like this video please share and subscribe to PyShine. Have a nice day. See you again.